Uh, so, I'll get straight to the point. The idea of this video is to answer the purpose limitations in weapons systems development. Specifically answering the question of if we have long-range, more precise munitions like Spear 3, and we can integrate precision and long-range munitions, then why do we need big cruise missiles like Stormbreaker? Would it not just be more effective to fire a load of precision munitions at a target? And I'm going to answer it very quickly because I hate people who prolong the answers to questions in a video in order to just drag it out, get people to actually watch as many minutes as possible. I despise that. So I'm going to answer it here at the beginning. The reason is simply because precise weapon systems do not have the mass, the penetrative power, the necessary cruising speed, or the advanced technologies that would be needed for this kind of coordinated strike on infrastructure. They don't have the cap same capabilities, and they don't have the same speciality. They are designed for something entirely different. So, there you go. Please click off now and go and enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy the day. Have a great day. For those that are still here, I will expand a little. Um, as with any age, we are limited by our technology, and we sort of strive towards the future um, and embrace new and superior technology as we are supposed to. We are meant to innovate. I'm going to draw a bit of a comparison here between this and you'll have to excuse me because I'm probably going to call Storm Shadow Storm Breaker at some point because they do sound incredibly similar, but when I say Storm Breaker, I mean Storm Shadow. I'm going to draw a comparison here, which is actually what gave me the idea for this little chat. I was discussing history with a friend the other day, the Battle of Agincourt, in regard to military history in general, and we were discussing the general uh, utility in war of a movement away from the idea of mastery, and that that was, to an extent, you know, political. He thinks that there's a sort of sacrifice to mastery of utility, or rather a sacrifice of mastery to utility. So to give a little context, and yes, I will get to the modern military stuff in a little while, Agincourt is largely thought to have been won due to the English longbow, which is weapon that is in my eyes more legendary than the Typhoon or the Type 31. It's simple, it's fairly archaic in some ways, but its impact was huge. Anyway, the discussion was around the longbow, and the idea that uh, one mastered longbow. So, for those who don't know about Agincourt, the context is, the English were in France under the command of King Henry V, and things were not going really so well as they went on this trail through Fr through France. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but a lot of Englishmen had died or were dying or were ill with dysentery or other waterborne diseases. So it was sort of trying to get out of the area. Anyway, at Agincourt, six to nine thousand Englishmen defeated a force of twelve to thirty six thousand Frenchmen. It's a notorious infamous victory, um, a huge victory, and the victory of this battle is synonymous with English or British military might. And the Longbow, as I said, played a major role in this. France's ranks were filled with farmers, um, not professional soldiers necessary, necessarily, with amateurs who could easily wield the simplistic crossbow. Anybody could. Um, and the scant English forces on the other side had the Longbow, which is you know, technically an older weapon. It's a more simplistic weapon. You can't just, you know, take it up and point where you want to go and pull the lever to release. It's not as simple. So you can't have as many soldiers within your forces because um, it takes training, it takes real dedication in order to master this weapon. So this older technology, which, you know, crafted of robust, flexible English U-word, the longbow, used by these shrouded archers, these archers had trained since the age of four, um, about. They were masters of their weapon. They could fire an arrow with devastating effect. Every five seconds, so that's 12 in a minute, with pinpoint accuracy. So the arrow would wound at 250 meters and they could reach that, kill at 100 and, you know, pierce French armor at 60 meters. 
So, they were incredibly impressive. <laughs> anyway, my friend and I have differing positions. And this stretches into the modern day. He believes that the issue is that weapons, now and then, are too simple to use. That people no longer master their weapon. And that makes a fighting force less potent. He thinks that mastery is superior to advancement. You don't have a singular person mastering a ship, per se. Um, and there's a lot of reliance on perhaps other systems. I absolutely disagree. I think that one can have both mastery and advancement, and one needs versatility and purpose as well. But, in regard to actual weaponry nowadays, the reason, perhaps, that it doesn't require mastery is because it is so specific. It has a specific purpose, and it carries out that perfect purpose to great effect on its own, without the need for mastery. You can't master a missile. Um, you can master the tactics behind it, you can, uh, you can master the strategy, the technology behind it, but no man can wield a missile in his hand and master it as a weapon itself. It's something that has to be mastered by a fighting force, like a mighty fighting ship. It's such a complex weapons system that not only does it massively rely on technological advantage, but it requires a lot of people to contribute to, I guess, collective mastery of use of that weapon. So it's not so individualistic anymore. Anyway, my point is, one can have both um, mastery and advancement in the modern age, and that really applies to Spear 3 and Storm Shadow. And yes, I didn't say Stormbreaker. So they are each intended for a very specific purpose. To paraphrase um, something I once read, Storm Shadow acts as a sledgehammer, Sp Spear 3 as a scalpel, and this is absolutely true, and each weapon system should be appreciated for its own unique purpose. Storm Shadow is incredible at flattening uh, complexes, penetrating caves. Um, to reference Breaking Bad, it isn't the one that knocks, no, it's the one that huffs and puffs and destroys the facade of your house before you even know that anyone's at the door, and I think that's incredibly different to Spear 3, and everyone really seems to agree. Spear 3 is massively potent, but it's for a far more specific use. It's for slightly shorter ranges and more precision attacks. It's not against large, um, sort of, static infrastructure. It's for vehicles. It's, you know, purposes the same as the original Brimstone, largely. Mass formations of armour, of vehicles, for convoys, for, you know, use against large fighting forces in which they seem to be incredibly well protected. Spear 3, if you're looking at a convoy or a lot of Spear 3 units, are going to be more effective than Storm Shadow if one has multiple units that need to be destroyed with specific dedicated um, munitions, so different warheads. If you have a convoy of five, and you have, well, let's say you have a convoy of ten, and they are all in a long line because, you know, you need spacing in order to not get all blown up at the same time by an IED. Let's say there is a convoy, and the UK, or the RAF, I guess in this case, decides to launch um, ten Spear 3 units. Likely, they will all hit their target and destroy the convoy. If you're looking at Storm Shadow, a singular unit will hit and not all targets will be destroyed. It has penetrative power. That's its job. It's not designed to take out multiple units at once. It's not meant to do that fine work. It's meant to be the brute that breaks open the door. Um, in regard to the sort of stationary, large stationary objects, the intended purpose of Storm Shadow, people often claim, well, why can't you just use all of these units, they do have good penetrative power, in order to hit specific weak points in a building, demolish it, which, I mean, fair enough, I wouldn't have that sort of creativity. But that's not realistic either, unfortunately, at least at the moment. Not only do they not have, you know, the accuracy of an archer fish when dealing with stuff that doesn't necessarily give off uh, multiple radar signals, so... A Storm Shadow will hone in to something, and so long as it generally hits, it's 
okay because it's going to blow whatever it is out of the you know out of the ground into the sky um or whatever is enclosed to smithereens spear three won't necessarily do that if there aren't multiple signals via which it can home in on then it's going to be far more difficult and that requires manual operation and then that just you know defeats the purpose of automation in general for large infrastructure let's say one has a complex um what you need to do is locate every single you know weak point every single load bearing wall every single load bearing i beam that's involved in these sorts of things find uh key point designations perform complex destruction calculations incredibly quickly and that sort of computer power costs a lot to develop and frankly in dire scenarios in scenarios where one needs to take action where one needs to bring down a whole complex there's often not much point in developing the computer technology in order to meticulously collapse this entire building um, as a civil engineer might do in those ca cases, the complex just needs to be destroyed. The cave needs to be collapsed. The bunker needs to be blown open. And computing power of these sort of Spear 3s, if they were to find weak points, it will all lead to the same end. The destruction of the target, the collapse of the target, albeit far more expensively and probably to a lesser effect, take, I guess, more tries. So, you know... It's specificity. There are certain scenarios where one would need uh, Spear 3, and certain scenarios where Storm Shadow, even if it's older technology, is absolutely necessary because you need that one huge sledgehammer to break the door down. So, the point is, we are no longer in the age of Agincourt. There is no such thing um, as an archer ma uh, mastering a missile. There is only technological advancement and technical prowess. Uh, for stuff that's not rifles or aircraft. There is still mastery, but not the mastery of the integrative systems. You could never master the arrow yourself. A ma an archer could never master the arrow, as we sort of see this comparison between the arrow and uh, Spear 3 and Storm Shadow. And I'm sure I'm, I've said Stormbreaker at some point in here. Um, you don't master the arrow, you master the system that it's launched off of. So that's the plane, that's uh, the ship, that's the helicopter, whatever it is. So I think claiming that necessarily versatility or mastery equals versatility, that's not the case. These are designed to be things that are launched from a platform that actually deal the damage. The platform itself is the thing one can master. So, in any case, I guess this is a pretty long-winded way of saying, um, or answering the question of why do we need Storm Shadow when we could use many, many Spear 3 units? The answer is that beyond cost, which is significant, uh, really significant, we are still technologically limited. A smaller unit does not have the penetrative power. The warhead concentration, the achievable sledgehammering capacity that Storm Shadow does, as effective as, let's say, the L115 A3, the current British sniper rifle, is it's not going to be as effective uh, as so to be able to fire and penetrate a tank. Similarly, similarly um, a Challenger 2 is not going to be able to carry out precision assassinations at 1.7 kilometers. Uh, in this example, if one is even assassinating 10 targets simultaneously via sniping, it still does not necessitate a tank. A tank will not be useful, it will not hit all targets. Nor will 10 L11A3s penetrate uh, the Challenger 2's armour. I mean, the overall point is, I guess, one can have twice, thrice the number of farmers with crossbows, but our specified masters of the longbow will win any day. Specification, even... I guess, configurations of specification, as you'd see in the Type 31 frigate. They're important. They are essential. Versatility is important as well, but fundamentally, having specific pur purpose is what ensures effectiveness, and that cannot really be compromised at any point because that hinders a force's fighting capability. The war modern warfighter cannot function if they do not have 
you know, the right tools for the specific purpose they have, the specific problem they have. So, while certain weapon systems, like Spear 3, may be fired in salvos, each weapons system has its specific purpose, which it can fulfill um, best through good strategy, good tactical use, and enhanced technological capability. So, why is it not as simple as use a load of Spear 3 units? As brilliant as they are, I think Spear 3 is great. Scalpels can be used to cut away wallpaper, um, and they serve their purpose, they're important, as is Spear 3. But, frankly, we, need, we still do need something that can break down the wall, as in Storm Shadow. So, specification, not specification, I guess specificity and purpose and intended design is still massively important. We are not in the age of the god weapon, the weapon that, you know, if you look at it, it's like, um, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, you melt away and it can achieve any purpose. It's both impenetrable and it's, you know, it's an immovable force and an indestru indestructible object. That does not exist yet. We do need some sort of variation. We do need some sort of, I guess you'd say, direction for the time being. Things need to have an intended purpose. So that's the long-winded answer to the question. Bravo if you waited this long for it.